a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. SS Kaiser Wilhelm der Gross Kaiser Wilhelm der Gross was a German transatlantic ocean liner named after Wilhelm I, German Emperor, the first head of state of the German Empire. The liner was constructed in Stettin for the North German Lloyd, and entered service in 1897. It was the first liner to have four funnels and is considered to be the first, superliner. The first of four sister ships built between 1903 and 1907 by NDL, she marked the beginning of a change in the way maritime supremacy was demonstrated in Europe. At the beginning of the 20th century, the ship began a new era in ocean travel and the novelty of having four funnels was quickly associated with size, strength, speed and above all luxury. Quickly established on the Atlantic, she gained the Blue Ribbon for Germany, a notable prize for the fastest trip from Europe to America which had been previously dominated by the British. In 1900, she was involved in a fire in the port of New York which resulted in several deaths. She was also the victim of a naval ram in the French port of Cherbourg in 1906. With the advent of her sister ships, she was modified to an all third-class ship to take advantage of the lucrative immigrant market traveling to the United States converted into an auxiliary cruiser. During World War I, she was given orders to capture and destroy enemy ships within the first months of the war. Relatively successful, she destroyed several enemy ships before eventually being defeated in the Battle of Rio de Oro by the British cruiser and scuttled by her crew. Her wreck was discovered in 1952 and dismantled. Origins, Conception and Construction At the end of the 19th century, the United Kingdom dominated maritime trade, with the ocean liners of the principal maritime companies such as the Cunard and the White Star Line, having gained more influence in Europe after William I, German Emperor, his grandfather, had created the German Empire in 1870. Emperor Wilhelm II wished to consolidate German influence on the sea and thus decrease that of the British. In 1889, the emperor himself had attended a naval review in honor of the jubilee of his grandmother Queen Victoria. There he saw the strength and size of these British ships, notably the latest and then largest liner owned by White Star. He particularly admired the fact that these ships could easily be converted to auxiliary cruisers in time of conflict, leaving a lasting impression. The emperor was heard to say that, we must have some of these. The Norddeutsche Lloyd, commonly known as NDL or North German Lloyd, was one of only two German maritime companies which had any influence in the hugely profitable transatlantic shipping market. Neither of these lines had shown any interest in operating large liners. NDL, however, was the first company to name any of their liners in honor of members of the imperial family, purely to flatter the emperor. The company also had important links with the naval architects A.G. Vulcan of Stettin. NDL then approached Vulcan and commissioned them to construct a new superliner, which was to be named Kaiser Wilhelm der Gross. The new ship would set a new style for ocean liners. She was the largest and longest liner afloat, and would have been the largest ever had it not been for of 1860. The launching of the ship took place on 4 May 1897 in the presence of the imperial family. It was the emperor who baptized the ship whose name honored his grandfather Emperor William I, the Great. Construction and the internal decoration of the liner took place in Bremerhaven and before long she was ready to begin her regular crossings, her maiden voyage being scheduled for September the same year. The most striking feature of Kaiser Wilhelm der Gross was her four funnels, the first ship ever to sport such a quartet, which for the next two decades would be a symbol of size and safety. Career Kaiser Wilhelm der Gross set out on her maiden voyage on 19 September 1897, traveling from Bremerhaven to Southampton and thence to New York. With a capacity of 800 third-class passengers, the NDL had ensured that they would profit greatly from the immigrants wishing to leave the continent, for a better standard of living in the United States. From her maiden voyage, she was the only superliner to cross the Atlantic with such speed, and such media attention. In March 1898, she successfully gained the Blue Ribbon with an average crossing speed of 22.3 knots, thus establishing the new German competitiveness. The Blue Ribbon, an award given for the fastest crossing of the North Atlantic, East, and Westbound, had previously been held by the Cunard Liner. 
This turn of events was closely watched by the maritime world of the era, who were eager to see how the British would retaliate. However, the NDL soon lost the Riband in 1900 to the new German Superliner of the Hamburg America Line. This change in events was acceptable to Germans, who were able to relax in the knowledge that they were still the owners of the fastest liner. However, NDL promptly ordered that Kaiser Wilhelm der Grosse undergo a refit to ensure that they were the dominant German company. This refit included the installation of wireless communication, then new technology which allowed Kaiser Wilhelm der Grosse to transmit telegraphic messages to a port, emphasizing her image of security. The NDL took the battle even further. 1901 saw the addition to their fleet of another four-funnel liner, named in honor of Crown Prince William, heir to the German throne, and they subsequently commissioned another two superliners, and of 1903 and 1907 respectively. From 1903 to 1907 the Blue Riband was held by SS Kaiser Wilhelm II. The company stated that the four liners were of the renowned Kaiser class and decided to market them as the four flyers a reference to their speed and associations with the Blue Riband. The career of Kaiser Wilhelm der Grosse, despite its prestige, was not without incident. In June 1900 at her key in Hoboken, New Jersey, she was the victim of a fire which killed 100 staff who were trying to remove the threat. Six years later, on 21 November 1906, she was the victim of a collision with a British ship of the Royal Mail in Cherbourg. Five passengers aboard Kaiser Wilhelm der Grosse, and three crewmen aboard Orinoco lost their lives in the incident and Kaiser Wilhelm der Grosse was found to have an 8 meters tear in her hull. To make matters worse, ever-growing technological evolution of steamships soon made NDL's express steamers outdated. Cunards and doubt matched their German rivals in all fields, and when the future White Stars entered service in 1911, luxury on the high seas was taken one step further. As a result, Kaiser Wilhelm der Grosse was rebuilt in 1913 to carry third-class passengers only. It seemed that her glory was fading regardless of her career as the first, four-stacker. From 26 January 1907, she was charged with carrying passengers between the Mediterranean Sea and New York, effectively ending the public career of the first of the four flyers. First World War From 1908 German naval captains had been receiving orders to make preparations in the event of a sudden war. In fact, Kaiser Wilhelm der Grosse was soon fitted with cannons and thus transformed into an auxiliary cruiser. Across the world, supply ships carrying weapons and provisions were ready to convert merchant vessels into armed auxiliary cruisers. In August 1914, international relations reached crisis point. The United Kingdom and France declared war on Germany after the Germans invaded Belgium and Luxembourg. Kaiser Wilhelm der Grosse was requisitioned and turned into an armed cruiser, painted in grey and black. Her commander at the time, Captain Ryman, operated not only under the rules of war, but also the rules of mercy. Ryman soon sank three ships, Tubal Cain, Kypra, and Nyanza, but only after taking their occupants on board further south in the Atlantic. Kaiser Wilhelm der Grosse encountered two passenger liners, Galician and Arlanza. Rayman's first intention was to sink both vessels, but, discovering that they had many women and children on board, he let them go. In this early stage of the war, it was thought that it could be fought in a chivalrous fashion. However, soon it was to become a total war, and ships would no longer be warned before being fired upon. As Kaiser Wilhelm der Grosse approached the west coast of Africa, her coral bunkers were almost empty and needed refilling. She stopped at Trio de Oro, where German and Austrian colliers started the task of refueling her. The task of coaling was still going on on 26 August. When the British cruiser appeared, Ryman quickly prepared his ship and crew for battle and steamed out to engage the enemy after disembarking his prisoners of war. A fierce battle took place, but came to a dramatic end when Kaiser Wilhelm der Grosse ran out of ammunition. According to the Germans, rather than let the enemy capture the one-time pride of Germany, Ryman ordered the ship to be scuttled using dynamite, which was already in position should this situation ever arise. On detonation, the explosives tore a massive hole in the ship, causing her to capsize. 
This version of events was disputed by the British, who stated that Kaiser Wilhelm der Grosse had been badly damaged and sinking, when Ryman ordered it to be abandoned. The British firmly believed that it was gunfire from HMS Highflyer which sank the German ship. Ryman managed to swim to shore, and he made his way back to Germany by working as a stoker on a neutral vessel. The downfall of such great liners in the event of war was their huge fuel consumption. Most liners were subsequently converted from cruisers to hospital ships or troop ships. Technical Aspects Kaiser Wilhelm der Grosse was 200 meters long and had a beam of 20 meters. The liner measured 14,349 gross register tons. In fact, her dimensions were similar to those of the 1860 Great Eastern, which was the largest ship of its time. As already noted, her four funnels were her most unusual feature. People associated the safety of an ocean liner with the number of stacks, or funnels they had. Some passengers would in fact refuse to board ships if they did not have four funnels. In an age when ocean travel was not as safe as today, it was important to ensure that passengers felt at ease. The special improvement in the arrangement of this steamer, as compared with other express steamers previously built by the NDL or other companies, consisted in the entire upper deck. Like many four-funneled liners, Kaiser Wilhelm der Grosse did not actually require that many. She had only two uptake shafts from the boiler rooms, which each branched into two. To connect to the four funnels this design is the reason for the funnels being unequally spaced. Kaiser Wilhelm der Grosse became the first liner to have a commercial wireless telegraphy system when the Marconi company installed one in February 1900. Communications were demonstrated, with systems installed at the Borkham Island Lighthouse and Borkham Reef Lightship 30 km northwest of the island, as well as with British stations, and the first ship to shore message was sent on 7 March. The ship was powered by with two triple expansion reciprocating engines, and had two 22 feet propellers, allowing her to reach speeds of over 20 knots. The engines were noted for their stability. The engines were balanced on the Schlick system, which prevented movement being transferred to the body of the ship, thus reducing unpleasant vibration. Interiors As a large passenger ship, Kaiser Wilhelm der Grosse was built to carry a maximum of 1,506 passengers, 206 first class, 226 seconds class, 1,074 third class. At the time of her construction, she had a crew numbering a mere 488. However, following her refit of 1913, her crew space was increased to 800. The decor of ship was in the style of Baroque Revival, overseen by Johann Popper, who carried out all of the interior decoration. This was unique as usually a ship would have several interior designers. The interiors were graced, with statues, mirrors, tapestries, gilding, and various portraits of the imperial family. The interiors of her sister ships were also placed in the hands of Popper. The first-class salon was noted for its tapestries and its blue seating. The smoking room, a traditionally male preserve, was made to look like a typical German inn. The dining room, capable of holding all passengers in one sitting, rose several decks and was crowned with a dome. The room also had columns and had its chairs fixed to the deck a typical feature of ocean liners of the era. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries Would you like to know more?